This is a butane soldering iron and torch. And I used to have one from Radio Shack. Um, this one's from Harbor Freight. One from Radio Shack that I had ended up clogging. And I tried fixing it multiple times and I was on the fence about purchasing really expensive butane soldering iron like from Blue Point or Matco or um, you know one of those more expensive brands but I ended up uh, doing a little research and came across a couple of videos on YouTube that talked about this soldering iron um, over at Harbor Freight and it seemed like a good deal uh, something that would probably cover all my bases and for 22 bucks you know what's the worst that could happen if it clogged like my Radio Shack one you know then I could just buy another one well in the process doing some research I found um, that perhaps the butane fuel itself is uh, a problematic for clogging these um, so this master appliance ultra butane fuel is non-clogging um, however something like this Ronson here is uh you know might not uh, be as non-clogging as this other one um so just keep that in mind when buying butane fuel if you can find something that's non-clogging you know might as well go for it and just buy it if you can't you know just you're, you're taking a little bit of a risk you might end up ruining your butane soldering iron over time um since this is so cheap and I couldn't find any more master appliance butane. I ended up buying this large, you know, Ronson from Ace Hardware. And yeah, I mean, if it ends up clogging, I'll just buy another one, I guess. I don't use it all that often, just for occasional projects. And so far, it's been working well since I've done a little modification. Um, when I first got it, I tried soldering with it, and I was impressed. It put out quite a bit of heat. Um, but what I did notice was that it was actually getting a little bit too hot for some of the projects that I was working on. And I had it turned all the way down to level one. But you can see that there's kind of like four little dots here. And uh, I guess I'll demonstrate what level one looks like just with the torch, not the tip, because you can't see the flame. So let's see if I can get it to light up. So there's level one right there, and that's that would that was as low as it could go, and then there's max. So you got about a two inch flame all the way down to maybe a one inch or something like that. Um, and essentially what I did was I first opened it up, and I was trying to figure out how the heck can I adjust this. I've adjusted lighters before in the past, those adjustable ones when I was a kid, and made them shoot you know six inch flames. Uh, but I kind of want to do the opposite with this and make the flame smaller, go figure. Uh, so there's four screws on it, and it's pretty simple to take apart. I guess I'll do it. I wasn't planning on doing this, but it shouldn't take too long. And I can just show you what the inside looks like and the modification that I did. Well, I might as well show you that here. I basically just grinded this out. You might even be able to do it without taking it apart with like an X-Acto knife or... You know, you could probably just use the Dremel without taking it apart. As long as you don't hit any parts in there. Um, but I ended up taking it apart to see if there was an easier way to do it. I wasn't planning on grinding it initially. I thought maybe I could just make an adjustment on the inside. You know, reposition the little knob so that it was, uh, you know, adjusting the gas flow a little bit lower. But it wasn't so easy to position because it seemed kind of glued to where it was. So this is kind of what you have on the inside. Um, this little piece here popped out on me and I found where it went pretty easily. Maybe I should show you that just in case yours pops out. Uh, but at least you can see this image here, what the inside looks like. This little red piece goes right here. Um, and that's important. And then this guy here goes 
right there. Um, and the long side, oop. good one, good one, Mike. The, the long side points down in this direction. So I had to look at the little gas adjustment wheel and I thought maybe I could pop it up and you know reposition it, reclock it there on the valve. But I couldn't, it seemed like pretty much adhered to the little cog. So the next best thing was I just grinded out a little groove on this piece so that the adjustment knob would go further to the negative, to the closed position. And I did that with a small Dremel bit. Hooked up the Dremel, grinded this out, and I went about a quarter inch past the small, the smallest or lowest setting previously. So, I guess I just wanted to um, tell you guys how to do that. If you have problems with the soldering iron getting too hot with the pieces that you're working on, you know, what was happening for me is I was burning some of the flux. And once the flux gets burned, the, the, the solder wasn't flowing. And it was just a little bit problematic. Um, if you're working with larger wires, that lowest setting might be good. But if you have really small wires that get hot fast, that lowest setting is too hot. And another benefit of this actually is you'll save a little bit of gas. Um, you can run it on low for longer, obviously. It's like better gas mileage in your car. And uh, yeah. So I'll show you guys what low looks like, um, the new low. So that was the old low, and now the new low goes down to about, about a quarter inch, half inch, something like that, quarter inch. So, <clears throat> Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. I will try to focus in on it. There we go. So that's the new low. And the old low is about like that. Quite a big difference. So now at that temperature there, I was able to do some better soldering for my application, working on some speakers. So hopefully this helps you. Um, you know, if you're on the fence about buying this thing, I think you should. And then just modify it. Your gas will last longer. You can solder smaller projects. It's a pretty nice tool, I think. Uh, I don't know what it's like longevity wise, how long it's gonna last, even with this Ronson fuel here, but uh, uh, for 22 bucks, if it goes out on me, I think I can buy another one. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.